everyone, it's Denise with In Liquid Color, and today we are going to take a little bit of a different look at our color mixing. So this isn't part of the color mixing series that I had started a couple weeks ago, uh, where we mixed greens, purples, and oranges, although that will help a little bit. But in that same playlist that I made about color mixing, or if you've been around on my channel for quite some time and had seen my original video on color mixing, then um, we're going to kind of revisit that today. So in my original color mixing video that I recorded last year, we went over a simple basic color wheel with the primary colors, secondary colors, and tertiary colors. Then we also talked about a split primary wheel where we used two of each of the primary colors and um, went around our color wheel that way and we mixed certain primaries together that were closer to each other on the color wheel to get the brightest secondary and tertiary colors possible. If you'd like to see more, go ahead and check out the link in the right hand corner above and you can go ahead and watch that video in full detail. So in those previous color mixing videos, we used our standard red, blue, and yellow to mix our different colors. And as any elementary school student will tell you, those are the primary colors, right? Well, not exactly. And what if I were to tell you that red isn't actually a primary color? Now, when I first heard this concept a couple of years ago, I was pretty blown away by it, and I know many of you are already familiar with what I'm about to say. But today we're going to be taking a look at a little bit of a different take on the color wheel, and that is by using cyan, magenta, and yellow. Now, where have you heard those colors before? Chances are, if you've ever had an inkjet printer, you know that those are the colors that the cartridges come in, and that is because those are the primary colors that a printer needs to make every other color represented in a full color printer. I do want us to take special note of two of the positions within the cyan magenta yellow color wheel, and that is the position that would typically be the red orange and the blue violet locations. Do you have this image in your head? So in my color mixing purple video that I did a couple of weeks ago, we talked a little bit about the difference between additive and subtractive mixing, and that's when you take light versus when you're mixing with paint. So the two are very different, and today we're clearly talking about what happens when you mix paints together. So for this first section, when we're mixing our red, blue, and yellow, the colors that I'm using is Pyro Red by Daniel Smith. Permanent Yellow Light by Mission Gold, although any middle of the road yellow would be just fine, and French Ultramarine also by Daniel Smith. Then we're going to take a look at Cyan, Magenta, and Yellow. Now I am using a student grade Van Gogh Quinacridone Rose here. Um, it is the truest version of magenta that I think that I have in my collection. I am using the same yellow so that I'm not changing that factor, so that's also the Permanent Yellow Light by Mission Gold, and I'm using Thalo Blue Green Shade by Daniel Smith. Now the Thalo Blue is a little bit darker than a cyan would be, however it is in the same hue and it will work in this uh, example. So you'll see here that the green and the orange in these color mixtures are much more clear, crisp, and vibrant. Those are the ones that use the halo blue and then the yellow and magenta respectively. The orange is a little bit more muddied, but we're going to talk about that in more detail in just a moment. So let's go back to that question of, is red a primary color? Now, I grew up my entire life believing full heartedly that no, you cannot mix red. It is a primary color, and the definition of a primary color is that you can't mix it from other colors. But the problem with red is that you can. <laughs> um, so here I'm gonna be swatching out the magenta, and I'm using a smaller little box here to let you know that I'm not adding very much yellow. It's just a very small amount of yellow and I am actually going to get a color that very closely resembles a middle of the road primary, in quotes, <laughs> what we would think of a primary red. I can also do something similar with the phthalo blue and mixing in a tiny bit of the magenta to get a more, again, quote unquote, primary blue that we would think of when we're mixing colors with markers or crayons or whatever in grade school. And then finally, next to it, I've put swatches of pure pigment straight from the tube next to these two colors so that you can kind of see the comparison. Now this isn't perfect because my camera is recording them differently as we talked about in the mixing purple video where we talked about light and cameras and, and screens and whatnot, but they are directly next to each other. So you can see very closely that the color I mixed with magenta and yellow 
lie somewhere between a pyro red and a carmine. So those are my warm and cool reds that I have on my palette, but they are very much similar to the color that I can mix from these two other colors. Now the blues as well, um, it's not a perfect match to either ultramarine or Prussian blue, but it is that dark, darker, you know, kind of mid-tone blue color. Now how does this really affect what colors you're going to have on your palette and use in everyday mixing? Um, it, I don't think it really does a whole lot unless you are a complete purist who only wants three colors on your palette or if you're just starting off and only want three colors on your palette or can only afford three colors on your palette to learn color mixing a little bit better. And in that case, I would definitely recommend a phthalo blue, a quinacridone rose, and any kind of middle of the road, mostly transparent yellow. In this case, I have the PY154. I do believe that you can get a much wider range of colors with this color palette than you can with the red, blue, and yellow using the pyrrole red and the ultramarine blue. You can see on the left hand side, I've got the lighter colors of cyan and magenta. I've got some bright secondary colors. And then also on the far right, you can see that I can make the other blue and red that are represented in the red, blue, and yellow color palette by mixing those colors together. So I hope this video was helpful in showing you a little bit about the red, blue, yellow primary that we have grown up with versus the cyan magenta yellow that if we really put some thought into it makes a lot of sense given that printers acclimate that way and they can print just about any color there is. If you want to expand your palette a little bit more and have a split primary palette, I would still refer back to that video that I did before. I'll put a link again in the description so that you can see that. And I would keep the phthalo blue and the quinacridone rose. Um, and then you can add in a warm red, like a pyro red, um, and your warm blue, like an ultramarine. And then I would actually split up your yellows. I would use maybe a lemon yellow and a, like a Hansa yellow deep or a new gamboge so that you have a cool yellow and a warm yellow and you can kind of mix this middle of the road yellow. Um, I do find personally that if I only have one yellow, I want it to be kind of in the middle because I have more versatility with that. But if you're going to split it into two, I would go warm and cool for that one. So I hope that this video was helpful in just kind of introducing this topic. I know it wasn't super in-depth and I didn't paint a picture or anything here, but I hope that by going over the cyan magenta yellow and the red blue yellow color schemes here can help you understand a little bit more about color mixing. Again, if you're new to the channel, please go ahead and check out the full playlist that this video is in and uh, you can see more on color mixing all of our secondary colors. I have a pretty extensive series on those and then I also have some older videos on color mixing um, when it comes to our, ori our original standard uh, kind of classic color wheels, split primaries, and also neutralizing and toning down colors. So. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and of course, extra thanks to my patrons who are helping keep this channel afloat. The Patreon has continued to grow immensely this last month, and I am so excited to have you all there on the community. We are just dollars away from our first overall goal, um, which will unlock the uh, blogs for the Color Spotlight series that I did a couple of months ago, as well as unlock community challenges every month. So I really look forward to that, and I will see you next time.